Hey everybody, welcome to Pink Shade. Today is Thursday and that means I'm talking to my friend Kate Casey about Bravo. Kate, I'm so glad you could join me. What a momentous occasion for the first episode of the reunion of Vanderpump Rules. I know, I know. I, you know, I've been saying from the beginning, this is, feels like a documentary or docu-series about what happens in the aftermath of a scandal. Mm. And now I feel like I'm getting the payoff. You know, uh, now I'm like, I, I've been like trying to figure out all along, like what's really happening behind the scenes. And I feel like we're now we're finally going to get to see it. And <coughs> I have to say, I think I'm most excited for the last episode. I feel like episode two of the reunion is going to be like nothing, but the third one at the end, when they show all of them collectively, the yeah. ending, which now we've seen, which is basically the montage, thereby signaling it's probably the end of the show. I want to see their reactions because I think you're going to have the most honest um, version of themselves because I do think Lala's right that a lot of people lived in the comments scene or mm -hmm. comments section of social media. So they were kind of playing to the audience the entire time. Yeah. But w then with the threat, if not reality of this show will no longer exist, I think you're going to see some people react like, all right, it is what it is. But I think a lot of people are going to go, you guys are assholes and you blew it for us. You should have stepped up to the plate and now we have no show and we're all shit out of luck. Interesting. You're going to see who was really at peace with like the end of the show or not really being on it and those that were trying so hard to make something happen in the show all season. Yeah, I definitely don't think it's the end of the show. I don't. Oh, I, do. I don't. I don't. I don't go for that prediction at all. I don't think that's correct. I don't. I don't. I'm sorry. I, I'm a believer. I'm, I'm a sorry, dreamer. but I think, yeah, <laughs> there's nothing left there. Yeah. Oh, don't say that to me. I mean, there's um, lots of other shows and they need to present new shows. Uh, unscripted has been hard. Unscripted too, but like really unscripted has been very hard for a long time because networks were not buying projects and they were just using old IP, like old shows and reinventing yeah. them because they were yeah. so risk averse because of the money they lost during COVID. And I think that they were hoping that this year would be the year that they recoup their losses. But now they're going to have to start buying projects that are start, going to start to air towards the end of the year, if not into Q1 of 2025. Mm -hmm. And I think that they're going to be more willing than they have in the last couple of years to get rid of shows that are stale in, and make room for something that's going to be uh, better and bring in more viewers. Because although the scandal was a mainstream story, they're not really bringing in new viewers anytime. Or the, in, like in the last season, I don't think they brought any new viewers. I completely disagree with that. I'm sorry. I hate to disagree with you because we are friends, but um, I just disagree with that. I think they probably brought in a ton of new viewers because mm -hmm. people wanted to see what it was all about. You know, if they did, it was one episode and then they trailed off because there was nothing going on all season long. Right. But that's reality TV for you. I mean, I had Chris DeRosa on this week to talk about 90 Day Happily Ever After. And he was like, you know, what I forgot about these 90 Day shows is literally you have a two hour show and the whole scene for this one couple, they're in the car or the whole scene. They're still standing in the kitchen talking like they never go to another scene. And I was like, yeah, I was like, I never thought about that because like on Housewives, what he works on you do have, here's a lunch, here's a dinner, here's somebody selling their skincare line, and then somebody has a mm -hmm. fight in the backyard. There are 12 events in one hour. Well, two Whereas, things with that. Yeah. Number one, yeah. Krista Rosa thinks it's the end of the show, too. Okay. Uh, okay. And number two, 90 Day Fiance is evergreen because you, you swap out people that we'll never care about. But the problem that Vanderpump faces is that the show's been on way too long. Mm -hmm. And people are not really invested in the, in the show anymore because none of them kind of get along. Like they mm -hmm. can just follow Ariana's new life wherever she goes. Love Island, Chicago, they'll follow her. It doesn't mean they're going to watch the show. Hmm. They like Ariana like and they yeah. probably like Katie and they like a lot of people like Lala, but they they'll follow wherever they go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think that's a lot of people that people like. So I don't know. We'll see. But I, uh, I have the. I'm keeping the faith. I'm and I, the faith. I also think what they could do, which they did to the Shaw's people, which they're God bless, they're coming forward and being a little bit more honest about it, was mm -hmm. when Shaw's was ending, they kind of kept them on a short leash by saying, "Well, we might be back. We're pausing it in their yeah. own way of saying that." And they were left in the lurch for a long time, and now they're coming forward. And they're like, "Yeah, we thought the show was coming back all this time. They kept us on this like leash." Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So they, they, they could do that, but they, I mean, there's nothing there. The problem I think is that without Raquel there, you really can't tie the bow up in the story. And I kind of feel like they all were surprised because they were all making different shows. Mm-hmm. Like Ariana's version of the show that she was filming was you're going to see me go to dancing with the stars in Chicago. And I like finally got my power and I'm, you know, I'm, I feel like she was felt even more so betrayed by Tom because they were friends more than like romantic, but like sometimes a friendship betrayal is even worse. Yeah. I feel like he kept her captive, captive of her hopes and dreams. It began with that book, the cocktail book where he like yeah. weaseled his way in. Yeah. Right. I think he right. did that all the time. And he was probably always like, I'm the star of the show. You're like supporting character. And this was the first time where she was like, I'm free from this nonsense and I can actually get things on my own. I think that's the show she thought was filming and surprised. She Mm -hmm. said she didn't watch the show. I'm sure people reported back like, oh yeah, episodes two, three, four, five, six are all about like, you're mad at a party. And she's probably Mm -hmm. like, but like I'm doing Chicago and dancing with the stars. I think Lala's version of the show was, this is my fertility journey and I'm breaking Mm -hmm. free from this ex. Sheena's was, um, I, I don't know if I want to have another child. And my, my husband is actually a great father, even though he has these estranged children. Tom mm-hmm. Sandoval's is like, I am, uh, breaking free from what people think. And I can finally be the lead singer that I always dreamed of. <laughs> but then I think that the producers were like, we're making a different show, which is what mm-hmm. happened after the scandal. And like, are these people still friends? So no one right. is in agreement at all. And that's why it feels so disjointed and clunky and weird. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about this reunion then. Um, you know, we start off the reunion with finding out Shorts and Sandoval are going to live together again. Uh, I guess that they are going to pay that crazy mortgage on the farmhouse in the valley that Sandoval lives in, which is wild to me. It's like going to be a $22,000 a month mortgage. like. Can you imagine? Like, that is insane. Yeah. That's insane. I mean, listen, if it was like uh, the Queen of Versailles house, I'd be like, okay, that's a $22,000 a month mortgage, but, or the top of a, you know, penthouse in New York City, but not this house, like a little Mm -hmm. four bedroom farmhouse in the valley. No. I just have concerns over the toilets being cleaned, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that too. They're real dirty in that house. But they're Um, like, there's a lot of arrested development there. Yeah. Like Tom feels like a low rent version of Matthew McConaughey's character in Dazed and Confused. Like he's hangs out a little too long when he's a little too old. Mm-hmm. And Schwartz is just like a goof. Like I'm around for along for the ride. This is cool. But yeah. I feel like the others are like, okay, well, we gotta like somewhat make some plans after this. Yeah, we're we're moving on with our lives. Like yeah. we're also 40 years old. So, you know, Sandoval's like, yeah, my dad's in his 60s and he has roommates. And you can well, see you Andy go. and Vanderpump going, okay. That's I feel not- like Andy Cohn was really good in this. I thought he was like some of his pointed questions were so veiled in sarcasm. <laughs> yeah. Like the when he asked um, Sheena, like he's like, so I've heard of postpartum depression, but I've never heard of postpartum OCD. Mm-hmm. Not making fun of that, just making fun of, I think the way she delivered that information. He was like, mm-hmm. like what? Yeah. I, I Which, think, by the way, I think the audience we were like, where did that come from? Like what? I think it's interesting when it's explained, though, right? It's because it's it's the irrational fear of something happening to your kid, and I think when you think of postpartum depression, like the thought, the intrusive thoughts come in about trying to hurt your child in some way. Mm -hmm. But she was explaining that what she had, hers was the opposite. And it was almost like she had intrusive thoughts of something terrible happening to her child, not at her own hand, but just real like crazy thoughts about the baby falling out of the bed or brought getting killed or, you know, all these things. And so, but by the way, she only took medication for it for like a month. So, well, that's uh, my, know. that's what I'm saying. It's not making fun of the situation of postpartum OC, which I'm sure many people have had. It yeah. was the way that it was delivered this season. As I said earlier, like she thought she was making a show where she was like, this is the Sheena show mm. and, and we are exceptional parents and this is what I'm navigating. But, but I don't think the show, I don't think they were really interested in it at all. And so yeah. when he's asking, it was like, where did this come out of left field? And then like, 
the exploration of it wasn't really, there wasn't a full commitment to the exploration of it. Yeah. I mean, she was just like, I already had anxiety and now it's like off the, off so, the chain yeah. and, and nobody like, can babysit what? the baby besides my mother. And, you know, and so, but by the way, after a while, we're like, we don't want to hear about she only wants her mom to babysit. Let's move on to something more interesting. You know? Well, I think a lot of people too, who have more than one child, where it's like, so you have yourself, your husband, your mother, and a babysitter mm-hmm. for one child. Right. That's- a nanny and your sister as well. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, that's a lot of people for for Summer Moon. Um, so they talk about Rachel uh, not coming back to the show. They talk about her podcast. And Andy asked any of them if they have regrets about how they treated her at the reunion. And Lala and Ariana both are like, no, we stand behind what we said. I was kind of thinking Lala would back off it and say, like, I actually was too hard on her. But she doesn't. She says, no, I stand behind what I said. And Lala said, the difference is like coming out on this stage, like Ariana had a solid support system. And I don't know if I could have been brave enough to come out here and face it. Like, you know, Raquel and Tom did, mm-hmm. they were pretty brave to face it because that, that was rough, you know? And of course, yeah, yeah Ariana's just rolling her eyes. Then that's the one Sandoval says he thinks Raquel is a coward. Because she preaches about moving on nonstop, but then she's constantly talking about him and the whole thing. And Schwartz is like, well, she's promoting a narrative that she's the victim. But when they're both to blame for their actions, like Tom did bad and she did bad. And he was like, yeah, like she used the word groom and that implies pedophile. And Lala goes, no, it doesn't. It doesn't mean pedophile. It means someone older and in power taking advantage of someone impressionable. And here is where Sandoval says, well, guess what? I was impressionable when she took off all her clothes and jumped in my fucking pool. That's what I'm saying. He's like very arrested development. He cannot have like like an important, thoughtful Mm -hmm. conversation Mm -hmm. at all. He just really is the actual definition of a narcissist. Yeah, he truly, he he thinks of no one but himself. And I don't think this press, I don't think it bothered him at all. And I'm dare to say, I don't believe any of the story he told about his mental um, frustrations and struggles this season. Because I saw, from what I saw, based on what I saw on social media and what I saw on the show, was someone who did not seem to be bothered at all by it. In fact, felt emboldened by it and almost was like, now I can finally shine. Yeah, it didn't work out that way for him. And I, there's not anybody on the planet that watched this season was like, oh, man, this guy's really going through something. And like, wow, we kind of feel bad about how hard we were on him. No, he made like it worse. Too selfish to even think about something like that. Yeah. 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 But I'm saying as a as a viewer and a fan base, I don't think people came away from this season thinking like, oh man, he really had it hard and we were too hard on him. No, no. we were, no, because he's sh- no growth, no improvement, you know? Well, I also feel like people kind of, well, I know, I know that I, when I th- thought about whether or not she was complicit, Raquel, I mean, the discussion of the grooming is frustrating because I feel like she targeted James to get on the show. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that w- one scene where she's talking to Ariana about their sex life is one mm-hmm. of the most cold, calculated moments I've ever seen. It is diabolical, that crazy mm-hmm. moment. So it's hard for me in reflection to go, she was taken under the, you know, the, the, the instruction of this lead singer of a cover band. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like yeah. they're both equally terrible people. Same. Me too. Me yeah. too. I totally agree with that. Yeah. So, and they were reminded about when Lala said to him on the boat, you isolate, you groom, and you lie. And then Lala goes, you know, I know that I have projected. Um, And I think in this situation, only Tom and Raquel really know what went on. And generally, I'm going to side with the girl. And then she says, you know, I also hate that Raquel's out there putting out on her podcast that she and Ariana were just acquaintances. When they were really, really good friends, they were practically best friends. And it's crazy for her to be like, Ariana and I were barely. Well, that's even her friends. way of. Yeah. It, that's the way of diffusing the um, or, or, or creating this narrative. It would only help create this narrative that he was quote unquote grooming her if she was Ariana was just some associate. Right. It would give less as much. credence. Yeah. Like if. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's. But by the way, that's strategic. So there you go. This is not. Some, she knew exactly what she was doing. Yeah. And that's not working either. People aren't buying that either. Mm -hmm. Um, Tom says, yeah, we both, you know, pursued the relationship. We're both 
um, equally wrong. And so then Andy tries to ask, you know, Raquel's now suing Ariana and Tom about the revenge porn. And they say they can't talk about it. And, you know, Sheena's like, that's such ridiculous because she didn't send the video to anybody. And I have listened a little bit to our friends over at the Bravo docket um, talking about the lawsuit and stuff and how mm, it's okay. likely the, the likely the whole thing is going to get thrown out because. Oh, Okay. There is no, there is no proof. They would have to subpoena like everybody's phone from over a year ago to find out about mm. the sending it. And there's no proof that it was sent to anybody. And it's the whole that he recorded her without her knowledge, but because there's only two people involved, there's really no case there. There, there would be a case mm. if it was recorded without her knowledge and he sent it to 10 people, but he didn't. And Ariana didn't either. Well, that so we know really, of. That we, we know of. There's, yeah, they we said just there's don't no know. case. There's and I no feel case. like Mark Arago said that that it, that it, something along the lines of it is absurd to suggest there's no evidence when in fact we do have it. So mm, I don't know. I, it, I feel then. like it's yeah. like let's it all. We got to let it play out. Yeah. Oh God. That and could definitely be one legal counsel going. There's they don't have anything, and you're like, well, how do you? Did you interview anybody? Did you look at evidence? Like I don't know. Yeah. Well, the girls in the Bravo docket were just reading what the court documents were. Oh, for sure. And, yeah. And going, you know, from that. This message is sponsored by Greenlight. As your kids get older, some things about parenting get easier, but others don't, like conversations about money. The fact is, kids won't really know how to manage their money until they're actually in charge of it, and that's where Greenlight can help. You guys, both of my kids had Greenlight cards when they were younger, and I have to tell you, it was a complete game changer because they felt cool because they had their own card, and then they could also use the app to see what was going on, and then I could use the app to uh, assign them tasks and chores and then give them allowance for it. It was really, really great. Greenlight is a debit card and a money app. It's made for families. Parents can send money to their kids and keep an eye on the kids spending and saving while the kids and teens build money confidence and lifelong financial literacy skills. With the app, kids learn how to save, invest, and spend wisely thanks to games that teach money skills in a fun, accessible way. The app also includes a chores feature, which I used a ton, where you can set up one time or recurring, recurring chores. My kids had like every Sunday, it was John's turn to do the trash. Every Wednesday was Anna's turn to do the trash I, or something like that. And I gave them like a buck or two bucks for it, but they wanted to make sure they did it because that money went right into their account. Then they could also at the end of the week decide how much to save. It was, it was great, you guys. It was so great for my kids. Millions of parents and kids are learning about money on Greenlight. It's the easy, convenient way for parents to raise financially smart kids and for families to navigate life together. Sign up for Greenlight today and get your first month free when you go to greenlight.com slash pink shade. That's greenlight.com slash pink shade. Try Greenlight for free. Greenlight.com slash pink shade. Uh, we see talk of Tom and his suicidal ideation and, you know, Lisa obviously saying she had a brother, you know, that died by suicide. And so, of course, it's very important for her to take it seriously. And, you know, Ariana also, she deals with anxiety and press depression. And then Tom, just out of the blue, he brings up, well, I want to know how you guys think I weaponized her um, mental health and her suicidal thoughts when she said that to me. And they all explain it to him. They're like it was a private conversation between the two of you and you were telling everybody it's, if you tell other people yeah, on awful. camera that you had these thoughts, mm -hmm. then you told about yourself, but you were telling about a private conversation that the two well, of you I had. So that, like, I think why don't it goes you get back it? to, I feel like her level f level of betray like feeling betrayed is because less about the romantic relationship it was like, that was, you know, we got to all remember like, in the ecosystem that they live in, you have to have alliances and friendships. Yeah. And they're in a weird vortex, which is high pressure, high stakes that we can't even relate to. And I think she relied on him to the detriment of her own sanity. Mm -hmm. And so that's just another layer of like, I wish she would have spent more time this season. If you're not going to talk to Tom, mm -hmm. give us some more understanding of what you withstood for all those years. Mm -hmm. because not that people didn't kind of understand her already. It's just, I want to know the lengths of which this person should be stopped. Yeah. So that the next woman that dates him knows how awful he is. Um, but that is a level of deceit 
for a, like a very close friend. I mean, they lived together. Maybe they weren't yeah. like sleeping together, but there was a very deep friendship, a, an exchange yeah. of personal information. And to share something that that is that deeply personal, yeah. that's unthinkable to me. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. And he goes, well, I feel like when she told me that she used it against me as manipulation. And Lisa, no goes, one uses that as manipulation. I can't no. imagine people do. And Lisa was like, "Yeah, but you're telling the world about a private conversation." And he goes, "But you know, it's because I didn't believe her because she said four other things that didn't happen." And Lala says, "Okay, well now you know how it is to actually have those thoughts and to have someone not believe you." Mm -hmm. And so he kind of took that in, and Lala says, "You know, you need to stop fixating on the things that are different with everybody else, so it doesn't apply to you." And Sheena goes, "Hey, you know what? If you didn't believe her and you wanted to call bullshit on what you were saying, you could have walked out the door. Walking out the door is calling bullshit on what she's saying." And he's like, "Yeah, but." And Sheena goes, "There's no but. My sentence was over. There's no but." So yeah. I mean, you think you when you think it's sinking in with him, no. It's really not. Mm -mm. It's really because he is going, but that's not, that wasn't the same as me. He's doing it. Everything comes back to him, you know? And then, and then I'm thinking as I see those scenes, how frustrating it must be to be a producer working yeah. with him. Because mm -hmm. you just can't. You can't get him off get the through. wheel. You can't get, get it through to him. Yeah. So Andy goes, you know, it does seem like you take two steps forward and 10 steps back because in the New York Times article, you know, you compared yourself your situation to George Floyd and OJ Simpson. And Andy goes, so you can clear the air now. Like, what do you want to say about that? And he goes, Oh, so like now I have to do a sales pitch on myself. And James is like, just don't make it worse by saying the wrong thing. Yeah. And he's just like, you know, and then he starts to try to explain it. But Lala kind of jumps in and goes, really what you're saying is it's absurd that this was a news story when there are real tragedies in the world. And he goes, yeah, it's like CNN is reporting on a cheating scandal on a guilty pleasure reality show sandwiched between a story about the war in the Ukraine. And like, why is this as relevant as real news stories? And Brock, Brock is like, yeah, it's clickbait. And then they were like, did any of you actually click and read the article? And it's so funny. He goes back to Sutton's the only one that read the article before mm -hmm. about Tom Girardi. Well, they all say no, they didn't read it. I don't think they read a lot of stuff. Andy goes, you should fire your PR team. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that was good. He, he had a lot of those good moments. Yeah. He was like, I mean, for real, dude. Like, that was terrible. Yeah. And then Katie says, you know, there's a concept called intent versus impact. It doesn't matter how you meant it. It doesn't matter your intent. It was the impact that it made. So that's why you have to think before you speak. And Lala goes, and just for the sake of the fucking show, stop talking to people. I was like, well, it's too late mm -hmm. for that. You know? Mm -hmm. All right. Lala's having a baby with donor number one for the party. She cries about that. Um, Summer Moon is turning three. We talk about postpartum OCD. We hear about the, you know, about her worrying about Brock and Lala. And she admits, you know, sometimes I live in the comment section. Mm -hmm. They went to Australia. Recently, he's up to date on child support. He has been for two years, but it's up to the kids now to decide if they want to see him. He's handling it the best he can. He lets Courtney, his ex, you know, he's letting her lead on this situation. But they all talk about what a great daddy is, a summer moon. And Katie says, I have to eat my own words because she was really hard on him in the beginning, which she should have been because here's nice. a guy, here's a guy who hasn't paid for child support in a long time. Is now dating your friend and going to have a baby. Obviously, you're going to be worried, but Katie's like, I have to eat my own words because now it's like a living amends, like he's proved himself, right? Mm -hmm. They talk about the Speedos, which I, no. I'm against. I'm against. Um, they talk about Ariana's success and her new relationship with Dan. And James is like, yeah, everybody gave me such a hard time because I started dating Allie two months after I broke up with Raquel. And she started dating this guy eight days later. And she goes, that's not true. I met him 10 days later. It was several months until we started dating. Yeah. But, but by the way, I kind of feel my position on that is like, I think that sometimes you can be like totally over someone in a relationship and you may have not had like the final nail in the coffin, but when you're done, you're done. Yes. And when you meet somebody and they give you just an inch of what you haven't had. Yeah. You're like, let's blow this taco stand. I'm going all in. And <laughs> yeah. Jeff, that's not to say she's going to marry the guy. It's just right. like, she really wanted to be in a relationship where she felt supported. And clearly she hadn't felt that like almost a decade. Yeah. She said, and watch what happens live that like 
he's not planning to move. All his family is there. And, you know, everything she does is based there in LA. She was Mm -hmm. like, so nobody's planning to move. She was like, I like the idea of being bi-coastal, like, you know, whatever. So yeah, she's doing her thing. So, okay. So then they ask Sandoval about his new girlfriend, Victoria, who was with him at Watch What Happens Live the other night. Ariana does an eye roll. She's a, um, a model. She has dated Leonardo DiCaprio. They start talking about some wallpaper they have in their bathroom. I'm sure that she loves Tom Sandoval for all the reasons that are important and not having to do anything with having, having to been in a big news story of the year. I'm sure. She's it's a, never it's a watched mutual, the show. She's never she's, watched I'm the show. I'm sure she's never watched the show. Never heard of it. Just met her him and like, and, Hey, yeah. that guy is in town. You should go sync up to him and maybe you can get yourself out there more. Mm-hmm. Totally. Um, Schwartz and Lila, you know, joke about their bromance all season. And, you know, they joke about like, would they ever hook up? And Lala's like, I mean, let's be honest, I'd eat you alive. And he's like, oh no, I'm just so, just poor me, poor Tom. We talk about Tom Tom. We talk about pump. We talk about something about her and about regarding something about her sandwich shop. LVP was like, um, you know, they they did. You guys did have disagreements because Ariana was away so much. Ariana's like, no, we didn't. What are you talking about? So it seems like everybody knows that Katie was frustrated with Ariana, except Mm -hmm. Ariana. Um, I mean, they just seem like they don't communicate well. Hence the reason that there's been all these hiccups, but yeah. I think the thing with that penny is real interesting. That lawsuit's yeah. interesting well, too. Well, like, listen, I think Lisa Vanderpump is pretty much useless to the show, with the exception of that moment, Agreed. because she can give that a little bit of like uh, the audience some context and the complexities of opening anything, let alone a sandwich shop. Yeah. So I did need her there to go. Uh, yeah, things are not. Yeah, you guys don't talk. If she yeah. hadn't been there, I think maybe people would have let that slide a little bit more. But then I was like. Then it opens the conversation of Schwartz and uh, and Sandoval going, yeah, we get it. Like, it's hard. Yeah, it was hard for us. It's hard for you, too. Yeah. It's only easy for Jack because he bought an existing restaurant, mm-hmm. you know. So um, they discuss the friendships now. And Lala says that Katie sent her um, an extremely hurtful text. And she was basically like, get rid of your lawyers because you need a fucking therapist and you're a fucking clown. You got to love Katie. You got to love Katie and her texts. I feel like those two, the reason that they can never be friends is because they're too similar. Like they're just like, they will destroy you. And I just don't think two alpha destroy you personalities can coexist. I agree. I I agree. And Katie goes, yeah, I don't know if that was about your custody. Yeah. I called her a fucking clown. Yeah. And Lala goes, yeah, we were on very rocky ground going into filming. And we see a lot of like, don't put your finger in my face. Shut the fuck up. Say it with your whole time. We see all that. I don't really quite understand the issue, but it seems Lala wanted people to rally around her. Like people Mm -hmm. rallied around Ariana and Katie's like, yeah, of course, who wouldn't want that? Lala felt abandoned by Katie and Katie says something about I don't the think public Katie thing has versus the ever gotten, thing. Yeah. I don't think Katie's ever gotten over the when she said, "Well, if you don't have nice tits and you don't you don't get invited on private chats, like that's on you." I don't think I think Katie's one of those people that like keeps clock, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. I don't think she ever got past that. I can be honest, I don't think a lot of the audience did either. Uh, yeah, a BJ on the PJ. Yeah. Yeah, they're like, mm. Yeah. No, we Give want to be like for the PJ, right? And look how that, intellectual yeah, look how, and get things on our own merits. Didn't turn I'm out. sure. I would assume that Lala at this point in her life feels embarrassed that she said that. But it I'm doesn't. Sure. Two things can be true at the same time. Doesn't mean that Katie isn't like. I met you under weird circumstances. You wanted me to sign an NDA, right? When you started dating this guy who clearly was married, and now we're a couple of years later that we're involved in this scandal, and you are not acknowledging that you had your own issues. But then Mm. again, same could be said of everybody. No one's hands are clean. Yeah, that's exactly right. No one's hands are clean. That's right. Um, So then Lala says, well, I mean, Katie on the phone told me that she feels like Ariana abandoned her and the sandwich shop was behind on the rent. And Ariana's like, what? And Sheena goes, you complained to Lala about Ariana not keeping up with the rent and leaving you when she went to Broadway. And Cody, Katie goes, okay, that was a one time I wish I would have gotten a heads up that you were like moving to New York for three months. Like that would have been nice. And then Katie goes, 
a lot of stuff that I say has to do with my own insecurities and her leaving like that was probably my own insecurity. And Lala goes, here's the thing. You and I are both truth tellers, but suddenly mm-hmm. when the camera goes up, I'm the only one talking about things. So I look like the bad guy. And then Andy goes, wait, okay. So you're saying that Katie is completely different off camera than on camera. And Lala's like, yeah, we had this long conversation, um, which I don't, I do I agree that that's not cool. If Lala and Katie had a long phone conversation where she just felt I'm venting because Ariana's like gone and we're trying to do mm-hmm. this shit and she's not here. I, I think it's not cool for Lala then to like say we had this conversation off camera and you were just yeah, venting I, and now you're telling it all. I don't like that. Yeah. Cause I feel like in true friendships, you give people the grace to have a, a vent. Lord knows you, you and I talk all the time. Uh, what do I always say? There's nothing I love more than a vent. Yeah, so but I would just never. I would never throw somebody under the bus by going, "Oh, you know, she vented me out." No, 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 no. That is a safe space. Every yeah. friend needs to be given the ability to do that. So I do think that's pretty gross. But I also think um, she, like I said, was filming one show, and mm. I think it, when it when she sees it's the end of the show, I think you're going to see her going. This is why I've brought things to the forefront because this show was so stale, and now here we are because mm-hmm. you guys would not show up and do the job and be authentic versions of yourself. You lived in the comments section. You you're making alliances and the show's been boring all season. Yeah. So Lala says she thinks more than Sheena lives in the comment section. She thinks Katie pays attention to the patrols and James pays attention to the comment section and let that dictate how they act on camera. And James literally goes, Oh, mm-hmm. he was, he did literally like a gay gasp, like, Oh, he was like, huh? I can't believe you said that about me. Yeah. Uh, which was hilarious. Was and funny. Lala, Lala kind of laughed. And Lala goes, you know, she, Katie and I had this conversation about the Ariana thing. And, you know, and Katie's upset because she's invested all her time and money into the sandwich shop. And, you know, basically Katie said to me, Lala, if you're going to fuck with my business, I'm going to fuck with yours. And then she goes, I mean, not to be rude, but something about her is nothing about her. And my business is thriving. I was like, what business is thriving? You're La La Beauty, your La La Baby, what business? Your mm. rap career, what's ra- what? Give them La La, uh, d- send it to Daryl. What business of hers is thriving? What is she talking about? If it, she has like skincare products, you know? Yeah, it's like give them La 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 Beauty. I don't know. Oh. La La Baby, I don't. I don't know. I have to so, be honest. Like all their ancillary pro- products, and this is probably true of Housewives too. Like I just don't pay attention. Yeah, the only I'm sure it's that, uh, very frustrating for them that we're not. Being, I, I just don't. I don't like. Uh, mm, no, I, I I do take Venus CBD every night. It's true. Do you? Okay. Mm-hmm. Thank you, um, Tamara. So, um, which by the way is owned by Medterra CBD. So if I just bought Medterra CBD, it's the exact same thing. So um, mm-hmm. Andy says, so you want her la- to Lala about Katie? You want her to be the same person on and off camera? And Lala goes, you all have been shooting this show for eleven years. Mm-hmm. And Katie goes, Katie goes, I've always been the same person. To which I agree with that. I agree with that. And I think she's allowed to off camera talk to her friend about something probably only four people in the world can understand. Lala being one of them. And she's allowed to vent, you know, mm-hmm. about the show and about this and that and the other to somebody else on the show and assume that her friend is not going to blab it, you know? Yeah. I don't know if she's very vocal on the show, though. So I could see how somebody would say. You're not being really, but she, she, she like chooses her words wisely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, next week we see Allie and Joe make an appearance. Um, Ariana and Lala fight some more. And Sandoval indicates that he has a secret about James. To where James is like, oh, okay, you have a secret. Go ahead and tell it. Do it. Well, what is it? Could the secret be? I mean, that, you know, it's been alleged quite a bit that James was, Verbally and physically abusive. To oh, Chris, that's to right. Chris, I forgot about that. And uh, Raquel. So right. Listen, um, I think I think James sober is a, a pretty entertaining. So I hope he stays that way because I think the drinking really you know, is a I lot of his problem. I'm not buying that they're like. I don't feel like James and Allie are very romantic. Mm, you don't see them kiss a lot. We did see them kiss she on that last episode. Very disinterested in him. I don't I think, know if it's not like the thing on camera, but I feel kind of like, I really want to marry you. I'd love to be with you. And she's just sort of like, yeah, I'm just not really into that. I don't know. I think the personality is very like chill. The, the page off of it, page for, she's trying to like duplicate page Craig, maybe. I don't mm. know, but it doesn't, 
I just, it feels very disjointed to me. I just think she's also super young and she's like, I don't need to decide this right now. I'm like 24 years old. Like, mm. yeah, I'm killing it with my astrology career. So, um, let's move on to the Valley. So on the Valley, this episode was called the big bear bombshell. Um, I think after seeing big bear on these shows for all these years, I think I need to go to big bear. I thought the opposite actually. <laughs> you thought it looked horrible. I'm like, I have no interest in never going there. I, I love to sit by, I, I like to look at a lake and a mountain. I think oh, it's, I don't. I hate a lake. Really? My parents, no, li- no well, interest. my di- my sister lives on a lake, but it's nice to have a body of water to look at. That's very big. Not like a pond. You know what I mean? I like to look at a huge mm. body of, I just like, to, I don't want to get in it. I don't want to swim. I, I don't want to swim in it. a body of water that I can't see the bottom of. I don't swim in any body of water. At all. And I feel um, like all the big bear cabins probably have like wood paneling. And this like house looks cool though. 1970s look- picture frames. And I don't want to live in that space because it reminds it- me too much of my childhood family room, which was wood paneled. Um, this in house looks very, it looks nice. This house looks nice though. It looks, it looks a little more elevated, I think. You're not buying it. All right. I mean, it's okay. I don't know. All right, I don't so really we- want to go over there ever. All right. Well, I'll let you know because I have to go to California in September to the northern part and we are going to go to like Yellowstone and do some things oh, I've like done that. that. I've done that road trip. Yeah. Dan, Dan and I went with the kids and I hated every minute of it. I think I just don't like nature in that space. I don't like, a hi- I like a hiking trail, but by the beach. I don't like a hiking trail or nature at all, but because we're there and I've never <laughs> been to one of these giant national parks, my husband's insisting that I go. You remember- um, Carrie Stainer was the handyman in Yellowstone and he murdered people. Remember that? Have a good trip. <laughs> We're not going to stay there. <laughs> We're going to drive in, have a look at the trees and leave. Oh my God. Um, okay. Ugh. So we opened this episode with Zach crying about not being invited to Big Bear. Okay. The other weird thing, oh, I guess so. <laughs> but if you're a single guy and you hear Baby Moon, yeah, who wants to go to that? He does because he's on the show. and That's he, it. Because no normal yeah. guy would be like, yeah, that sounds fun going with like a woman or a woman and her spouse to like talk about, about how she's about to have a baby. Yeah, Listen, a nine month pregnant woman fun. can't like motor around that much. It's not drinking. Like what's, uh, uh, mm. felt like a little bit overdone. Because the other guys days. will be there and they like to, you know, drink and everything. So Kristen says, um, yeah, I feel like Janet is taking her anger at me out on Zach, and Zach should be allowed to go. And Zach said, um, Janet is not Loki. Janet is a high-key mean girl, which I think we're learning more and more that Janet is a total mess. And I like it because I like somebody could give Jax a run for his money. I don't think Listen, she's that bad, actually. I think that it's been said a lot. Like, she's a lot more, like, messy than even Jax is. So, I'm here for it. I think yeah, this is what the show Yeah, she's moving needs. the story, m- moving the show. Yeah. 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 So, then we see that guy, Simon, who came in with the funny Crocs on his phone. Yeah, that and was I, good. I loved how Jazz was like, can we help you? Do you want to yeah. get in the car? What are you doing? And he's like, literally, I'm taking notes on my phone for Janet. Yeah. <laughs> I died. He just admitted it. He didn't say, oh, I was, oh, he, he didn't lie. He just, yeah. he admitted it. And Jasmine goes, fuck off, Simon. So he walks <laughs> off and, she, and Jasmine in her talking head goes, what we don't need is Simon, uh, Harriet, the spy over here taking notes for Janet. Janet should have fucking come, whatever. Yeah. I thought that was, this show is good. This show is good. I was just going to say, I really hope that they don't move Sheena or Lala over because I really like that they all came in at the same time. Yes. It would forever change the dynamics if you have somebody come in from another show who has all like a big platform. Yeah. Kind of would suck the air out of the room. Yeah. I, I like I like that these are all new faces that mm-hmm. we're seeing. Yeah. So Jesse comes home from his ayahuasca trip, okay? And he hugs Michelle. And we've never barely even seen them touch each other, but he was hugging her and closing his eyes like he was having a spiritual moment. I think he's still on drugs. And he says, my, my experience was profound. I'm now very aware. It was plant-based medicine mixed with meditation and breathing. And um, I had a, I saw the demon that was in me and everybody was energy and pixelated. But then I had some apple juice and then I felt better. I think I died my ego death. I was blind and now I can see. And she's just like, 
oh my God, this is not what I want. No. This is, oh, uh, no. And she goes, well, thanks for doing that. It's a big step for you. Like, <laughs> I mean, she's like, I still don't like you. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to hear about your ego death and your pixelating and your, uh, shoot me, horrible, mm-hmm. horrible. But she's just like, okay. So now we see Simon and Jared are over at Janet's and they're looking at outfits for her to take to Big Bear, which is ridiculous. She's nine months pregnant. There's only four things she can wear. So Simon is saying that he was texting the updates to Janet and Janet goes, oh my God, it was so great. And he was like, but then Jasmine got mad at me and then Kristen and Zach were crying and Janet goes, I don't care. Kristen cries all the time. And I was kind of like, does she? And then they showed the clips of just this season all the time. I was like, I guess she does. Yeah. I guess she, she does. She has cry. been crying a lot. Yeah. And Janet says, she excluded me from her party and I'm not crying. I don't care. So Janet goes, I'm going to call Zach to tell him that he's not invited. And Simon and Jared sit in the corner and and they're like clapping and thumbs upping and everything. And they're like, she goes, listen, um, he was being like, I just think it's so rude. Like you, you're being so rude about this, not inviting and you're having somebody else tell me I'm not invited. And she goes, you're coming in hot for somebody who wants to be invited to my baby moon. You're actually yeah. entitled to come. And of course, what we're not saying is it's a cast trip yes, and she's exactly. trying and she's icing him out. But he, but Janet was trying to ice them out. Yeah. Oh, and what they're not saying is we're trying to ice you out of this show, which mm-hmm. is never going to happen because Kristen is the reason the show is. So, yeah, and he's he got there via Brittany, right? They went to college together. Like, he, is he really friends with the other people, or is this like Brittany needs a friend? Well, okay. My understanding is, you know, he moved from Kentucky or whatever over to LA because he's Brittany's best friend, and then through that process, he became best friends with Kristen as well. The store, the, my, and I don't know what podcast I heard this on, so I'm not trying to not give somebody credit. I really can't remember that the story originally was supposed to be. The Valley, which was Jax and Brittany and Kristen and Zach. Mm. And that Kristen was going to have to try to have a baby with Zach as the donor. And they were going to be like. That it seems pretty slim for a sh- potential show. And maybe so that's did, why so it, it wasn't didn't happen. sold. It wasn't yeah. sold. Right. So that's probably another reason why Zach feels very, very entitled. Yes, to that be does. Being yes. Cast member, you know? Yeah. So Nia and Danny are bringing the twins. They have to because she's still breastfeeding mm-hmm. and the nanny to Big Bear. Um, they have walkie talkies in the car, which is, is funny. It's a fun idea. Um, the Big Bear house is huge and gorgeous. Um, Jesse has brought an entire suitcase of his own alcohol and coffee maker because he fears that when he gets there. I kind of like, like it, him. It won't I think be. he's my favorite. Oh, God. Okay. I think he's just so L.A. He's very good TV because he's very just the way he's he dresses. Just so and his, LA, yeah, he's such band a hair. He's like yeah. a character. Like if he were someone's dad, for example, like I think uh-huh. he's going to get even better with age in terms of quirkiness. Like if mm. I went to someone and they were like, "Kate, you got to meet my dad. He's a character." I'd be like, "I wouldn't want to h- hang out with him all day long," because he's so specifically LA. He's been clueless to the fact that his wife has been miserable for a very long time. Yeah. Um. I don't know. He doesn't seem that diabolical, but he seems clueless. I think it's funny how he's like, we don't live in the Valley. We live behind the Chateau Marmont. It screams ambition. But that's how people in LA think. Yeah, I know. I know. Like the Valley is so gross. That's so embarrassing. That's how people are there. Yeah. But it's literally like, I was just there. It's 15 minutes away. Of course he sells luxury real estate. If he brings like all those accoutrements just to like, go to big first i just can't imagine people in la are like let's go to big bear yeah but they do all the time on the shows oh Um, no no only on vanderpump didn't they go to big bear one time on beverly hills or maybe they oh they went to tahoe no tahoe Tahoe is high is higher level okay big bear is not okay yeah (laughs) it's sort of Uh, like going to aspen or the poconos Wow. Well, that's a huge leap of difference. Yeah. I mean, okay. Mark Zuckerberg has a huge home on the water in Tahoe. There okay. you go. Big Bear, my husband's dad had a had a condo there like when he was growing up. Stassi's it's, mom lives in Big Bear. It's more like normal people go there. Yeah. It's like suburbia, suburban people go there. But Tahoe is like, they filmed parts of the Godfather there. Yeah. 
Yeah, oh, Watahu looks amazing. Yeah, and no, it's yeah. unbelievable. You guys know that I have uh, some experience with the weight loss shots. When I did the weight loss shot, I lost about 30 pounds in six to seven months. I also really cut down the alcohol by a ton. I started eating a lot cleaner and started walking my dogs twice a day. It was super successful for me. And I wish the Row Body Program had been around when I was on that journey a couple of years ago. Row Body provides access to the most popular weight loss shots on the market. The Row Body Program pairs a weekly shot with healthy lifestyle changes so you can lose 15 to 20% of your weight in a year on average and actually keep it off, which is like me. That is what I have done. Over 200,000 people have already chosen Row to help them lose weight. The program members have support throughout the process. Um, Row's partner handles all the insurance paperwork and all that stuff to help it get covered. And if you're eligible, patients will have access to the provider on demand for any questions, which would have been great when I was doing it because sometimes you can't get anybody to help you. You can sign up online for the comfort of your own home. And this means no scheduling a doctor's appointment, no commute to the doctor's office, no waiting rooms. Waiting rooms are my freaking nightmare. Average weight loss is 15 to 20% in one year with healthy lifestyle changes. BMI and other eligibility criteria apply. You're going to go to row.co slash pink shade. Sign up today and you'll pay just $99 for your first month and $145 a month after that. Medication costs are separate. That's row.co slash pink shade, R-O dot C-O slash pink shade. And I hate the lake and I thought it was beautiful. So maybe we'll go to Tahoe. Maybe that's closer to Yellowstone. Maybe we'll go there. You know, you go to Tahoe for sure. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to start working. I actually, when I was there, I thought there should be a reality show about um, this one place. It's like they, they do boats for people in Tahoe on the water. It was like, they should just cover this for the summer. Yeah. What about Wolf? Lisa Vanderpump's new restaurant at Lake Tahoe. <laughs> Quiet, the sexiest luxury. restaurant. Sexiest All restaurant in Tahoe. In Tahoe. Um, then they show us about, uh, remember when Jax almost drowned a big bear? That was funny. Um, Brittany's car sick. So she gets car sick on the drive there and she's car sick. Now this is, I think the third time we've seen her with a pretty bad stomach ache. So I am beginning to wonder if she's got what, um, um, not Alexis, but Marisol from Miami had when she, the inside of her stomach was eating itself because of her alcohol abuse. Well, yeah. I mean, you know? he's intimating that she's a full-blown alcoholic, which seems yeah. very dangerous to do when you're co-parenting a child, mm-hmm. uh, to say the least. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, yes. Um, I just heard her saying, you know, that she's in the Airbnb now with Cruz and that he seems to be do, uh, doing so much better. I think, I think Heather said this on her podcast podcast that Cruz is doing so much better not being around parents that are fighting. Oh, sure. I believe that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Jesse tells Michelle, he's like hugging her from behind, like, this is our sex trip. And she's like, okay. Now she acts kind of nice, but maybe just because the cameras no, are she's on. like checked out of that relationship a long time ago, but she did say in the first episode that he did not help at all with the baby. Yeah. And, and now he's, now he's sorry. trying to act like he's super bad. Yeah. You can't get over that. I agree. You can't. So the girls are on a boat and they're kind of back and forth about the whole thing with Kristen and the blah, blah, blah. The guys are sitting on a little beach and they're talking. And Jack says, look, you know, I just, I just can't get over this because like, so Jesse has mm-hmm. floated off on a raft. So he goes, I know Kristen told me that Michelle is texting somebody on the side. And Jason goes, why are we sneaking around like little bitches? We should just tell him. And Jack says, like, I don't know. Cause it came out of Dodie's mouth. So I don't know. And Danny goes, Jesse knows his marriage is in trouble. It's not going to be like news to him. You, Danny gets away from those kids for four minutes and he gets blackout, like in the first 10 minutes. Like he yeah. gets so excited to have a break from his kids. But I mean, he's got a nanny and the two-year-old's not even there. So mm-hmm. get drunk, get drunk. So Luke and Kristen are now talking to a couple's counselor. His name is Alan. Um, here's my main question. Why is there a giant black refrigerator next to Luke and Kristen's couch? Because that is another, a really funny kind of weird thing is that I feel like they're trolling her too. She used to live in this really cute house and then they're like, she's in this carpeted apartment with a black refrigerator. Yeah. Yeah. That's the the cheapest refrigerator you can get at a Best Buy. And it's 
better than her apartment she just moved out of. You know, I did go to her old apartment before she owned the home and yeah. she gave me a tour of her refrigerator. Now that I think about it, I think I still have pictures of it. It was lots of vegetables. I think she's like super vegan or something. She's super vegan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the therapist- She just was- seems really miserable, doesn't she? No. Kristen? I don't think she, I don't think she seems super miserable. I think that- I feel like she's her- on the verge of tears and, and angry and just- Agity. And I, by the way, I watched the last part of that episode when my husband was in the room and he was yeah. like, are these two for real? I have to say that therapist that they used was really good. I thought he was really, really good with the insight. Yeah. But they are, comp- they're, they're uh, individual ideas about what parenting would be like. Yeah. And well, their they- mutual beliefs is so out of whack, crazy town. Well, they've had no, they've had zero discussion. And so that's what the therapist wants to ask them. Like, you know about having a baby. So now you've got to talk about financial stuff. And she's like, no, yeah, I don't want to talk about money. And Luke goes, it's not comfortable. It's not like a sexy conversation, but we have to have it. We have to talk about money. And we also have to decide where we're going to live. Cause he's pretty Mm -hmm. staunch into, I'm not living this LA life. And she's pretty much like, I'm not living off the grid in Colorado. So they have to come up with something. Maybe they can move to Tahoe. They got to come up with something in the middle. You know, mm-hmm. they have to. Um, now, the girls on the boat stopped by the beach area with the guys, okay? I don't know how this happened, but they did. Jesse and Danny get drunk and start play fighting. And then the girls are showing off their self-defense skills. And Jesse hurts Michelle's nose, who apparently she, heard, she got a nose job only a year ago. When they show her her old nose. That's so like, L.A. That's so her, L.A. Her old nose looks like Rachel, Fu- Rachel Fuda's new nose. Oh, Doesn't yeah, it? It I did. It, it had that flip up that everybody mm-hmm. wants, that ski jump. The, the girl on Melissa on Love During Lockup did the same thing. Um, Jackson and Brittany have a fight because I guess the babysitter has sent them a clip of Cruz crying in the pool because he's upset about a swim lesson. By the way, what a dumb babysitter. That is not, a, we don't appreciate that. No. That mm-hmm. was really dumb. Yeah, OBS you're already getting uh, like look, parents don't need is. to like what because they can't do anything about it. And that's right. Harp, you know, I didn't like that. Just show a picture of him in his little swimsuit and be like, "We had swim lessons today. It went great." Yeah. You know, and he's like, "Turn that off. Tur- what's wrong with you? Turn that off. What's wrong with you? you, you keep play- turn it down." And she tries to grab at her phone. She's like, "Golly, Jax, you don't have to be so aggressive." She is so. Poor Britt. Now she is in two pair of glasses. She's in her regular glasses and her sunglasses on top. She obviously scratched her eyeball or something. Yeah. It's it's just not a, the, her glasses are not cute glasses. It's her glasses are not cute. Mm-hmm. They are not cute glasses, and they keep showing her in the glasses. And I I, I I'm really everything she is, does he can't her. stand. He's he's he was over this a long time ago. I think that Ryan Bailey made a great point. I was on his podcast on Wednesday and he made a great point, which is Jax feels like being married to Brittany is what he's supposed to do. Sure. And he, mm-hmm. he just, he knows that's what he knows. He's supposed to love her and this marriage. And it's exactly perfect for, he's got this woman begging him to have sex. She wants to have more kids with him. She makes her own money. There's nothing about it that he shouldn't want want because i think he does i think he still lives in the uh jason from florida becoming jack's portion of his life yeah where you know he's making drinks he's like well i got that job because of the way i looked it's going to south but i got it because the way i think he is struggling with the reality of getting older and he thinks he should have been with somebody who was more of his level in his mind right but Brittany, if you recall definitely looks wise was slash well, he is made, well, his he, level. She made, he made her change her look to accommodate him. I thought right. she was so cute when she was just from Kentucky. I agree. I think and that then he like made her get all these cert. I don't know if he made her, but like maybe coaxed her into believing she needed surgeries. I hope, I really hope that when she does finally divorce him, which I do believe is coming, and every person on that cast when asked will say they're never getting back together. He does mm-hmm. not appreciate her. That I hope that she will get smaller breast implants because I think she should go with what she wanted originally, not what he wanted. Mm-hmm. She seems uncomfortable. She seems uncomfortable. She yeah. seems uncomfortable. So they have to pull... Um, they're in the car talking and Brittany's like, Jax just don't care how he speaks to me in front of other people. I mean, you know, and then of course, you know, the... The sidebar there is, how does he speak to you at home? 
this is how he speaks to you in front of other people. And they have to pull over because she's sick. She's like, I just have always had a weak stomach and I think I'm still sick from that car ride earlier. But please don't tell Jax I threw up because then he's going to ask me how many drinks I had and he's going to think that's because I was drunk. And they were like, you didn't even drink on the boat. She goes, I had one drink on the beach and he's never going to let me live it down. So this mm -hmm. is a, a theme of what he's doing to her, right? So now we see Danny. Danny's talking to Jesse and Jesse. I didn't quite understand this, but he says to the extent of, I'm, I apologize if I offended you. And Danny explains to Jesse, that is not an apology. Yeah. I apologize if I offended you. It's not an apology. And Danny says, Jesse keeps talking about this brand new person he's become, but I can't wait to meet him. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> and then Danny and Jesse are like, beep, 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 back and forth. And then, um, Danny, Danny was like, shut the fuck up. Or Jesse says, and I was like, I don't really quite understand what they're fighting about, mm -hmm. but I didn't care enough to rewind. Michelle goes in to talk to Jesse, who's in the bed. So obviously the guys got schnockered, right? So Michelle's yeah. like, what's wrong with you? He's like, I should need a nap. I should need a nap. So everybody's like, we're going to change into comfy clothes. And everybody gets super excited. Jax asks Michelle to go outside and talk. They're pouring drinks. And she's like, you know, he's a wimp. He's in the bed, but I'm not. So he goes, listen, I'll put $20 in the jar because I'm going to talk about Kristen. So they're all decided that whoever yeah. mentions Kristen has to put $20 in the jar. And if you never mention her the whole weekend, then you get to take all the money. So they go outside to chat and he says, you know, listen, Kristen told me that you were texting this guy on the side. And Michelle goes, yeah, I met a celebrity and I had coffee with him. And Jess goes, oh, God, this is just so hard for me to say. So hard for me to say. But uh, my understanding was that it was like sexy pictures. And Michelle goes, yeah, I've texted with multiple people. Like, what do you want to know? I mean, she's got no shame in her game. I kind of love that yeah. about her. Yeah. I kind like I, I didn't really get her. But then when she did that, I was like, OK, I'm kind of into this. Yeah, because she's like, don't forget, I rented an apartment, was going to move out, and he begged me to stay. Yes, this shit has been over for a while. Yeah. Yes, I was texting but with But also, other like, go ahead and try me, dog. Like, right. it's not going to work. Like, yeah, you, you got think something on prove? me? Yeah. Fine. Mm -hmm. I thought I agree. that was awesome. I thought it was great. But I'm just, I just want to know who is the celebrity. I, when they talked about the director which everybody assumes is Michael Bay. I think we're mm -hmm. talking about a different person now because they said there was also a male celebrity and that wouldn't be Michael Bay. Well, it sounds like she's got m multiple people that she's texting. You go girl. I like it. Uh, I know. I kind of do. I'm telling you, I like it too, but I also like him. I think there's such weirdos in their own cute, funny, cool way. Mm -hmm. I think just remind me of like cool people I meet in LA. They're just <laughs> yes. like, uh, they're very like, likable in their own weird way just not know. together just not together and they're probably great co-workers they probably the sh sell the shit out of a 12 million dollar property yeah i bet like, so and it'll be even better yeah. now that they're divorced because they may look at us we're quirky we're divorced but we still work together and then they roast yeah. each other like she's gonna be like where's your boyfriend and he's gonna be like i don't have a boyfriend and she's like that's yeah. what you keep telling yourself or like would the yeah. banter back and forth yeah. would be really funny and i think like in the future, their daughter's going to be like one of those girls on TikTok that takes videos of her divorced parents and how yeah. they like get along great. Yeah. They're like, she's disgusted by him right now because she just does not want to be in the confines of a marriage. But I bet you they'll like have a funny relationship in years to come. Yeah. I and I want to see right. him date. I want to see her date. I want to see his reaction to her dating. Like I'm already thinking two, three seasons ahead now. He's only going to date girls that are between uh, 24 and 29. No, not in, not true. In fact, he's dating a woman who lives here in Orange County, who I believe really? is over 30. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Over 30? Wow. I know. Yeah, yeah. She may be over 35. Yeah, I definitely don't think he wants any more children. I think he just wants the one. Isabel Bunny. I think for the short term, he wants someone who is a fan of his like thinks he's oh, really yeah. fun and cool mm -hmm. i think post divorce that's what people like i think she's mm -hmm. gonna get a tremendous amount of sex i think so too but i think he wants to just be loved i think in the short term she wants a lot of sex yeah yeah but i mean you know the, at the end of the day he's the one that screwed up the marriage and it's too mm -hmm. little too late and so they just needed to be divorced and be co-parents that's it which is what they're doing. Yeah. Okay. Um, next week, uh, Danny cries about being stressed of saying like, you know, you don't understand, like you're up every two hours feeding these babies and we've got this one and a half year, whatever, you know, and it's, as you know, 
uh, very stressful to have little children like that. So he cries about that. Also, they have twins. That's another whole thing. Yeah, it's a whole different- Twin babies is like, wow. Different ball of wax. Um, Michelle talks to Jesse and says, yeah, you know, I told you I had coffee with that celebrity. And he was like, well, I didn't know about the sexy pics. And she's like, hmm. Whatever. Um, <laughs> I just think they're such good TV. <laughs> um, then he cries to the guys and says, you guys, like, I think my marriage is over. Yeah, you're right. Um, Brittany still feels sick. She's going on a few days at this. And Jax um, demands from the other it girls. It is he- weird. Now let's think about it. When they had the sake dinner, she took yeah. a, like, a, like a shot. And then she yeah. was like, I don't feel. She must have been drinking beforehand or it had some. Did, did she can't eat a bad tuna roll like every single day and have this reaction. Like, what is happening? I think she has like an ulcer. Oh, I yeah. She, that, like, I, I, like, like, what is happening? Yeah. Yeah. I think she has like what Marisol had when they were on that ultimate girls trip. She was having so much trouble. The drinking is what made it worse. Because oh, because that, like, the drinking, that's why he's mad she's drinking. Because I think she's got- So maybe like, he's not saying that she's an alcoholic. Maybe he's what he's saying is like, you're exacerbating the problem by drinking. They haven't got a diagnosis on this problem. They don't know what it is. He oh, just knows boy. every time she takes a drink, then she feels sick. Maybe she should yeah. go to the doctor. Um, and is he only getting mad because that means that she can't take care of the baby and then probably. he has to? Yeah. Yeah, probably. The so baby. He's um, not a baby, but you get the, the point. Jax is saying to the girls, he's like, how much was she drinking? Like, how much was she drinking on the boat? And Jasmine said, zero. She was drinking zero. And Brittany sticks her head out of the room and goes, you're my fucking husband trying to make me look like a bad person. Fuck you, Jax. Fuck you. <laughs> Slam. With those glasses on. And he's like, uh-oh. But I mean, listen, Jax, who's had four nose jobs because he's burned a hole in his nose, allegedly. I right. mean- let's let's don't throw stones here and oh definitely she, yeah maybe she drinks a lot because she's upset all the time so she thinks she could have i a think glasses honestly wine, the edge he's on. just like everything annoys her at this point or, excuse me annoys Every, him everything she does yeah everything she does he's like I, enough i can't i can't he can't stand the way she breathes mm-hmm. when she t- uh, brushes her teeth he can't yeah. stand the way that she doesn't put like the dishes in the dishwasher yeah because he's he he really is like ocd with the cleaning yeah I mean, maybe. Yeah. Just because he told us that doesn't mean it's true. Well, that's true. That's a great point. Um, I would like to get a quick, just your quick thoughts on Jersey. We're two episodes in to yeah. Jersey. And so far, I feel like the thing I was most excited about was when they did that whole Teresa talking to Louie on the phone, like, they just broke the news on social media mm-hmm. that John Fuda likes the double-sided I purple I mean, they're dildo. just so transparent. They're so calculated, calculating. The only thing that I found interesting, especially I'm so bummed that these accounts yeah. that it, that trolled, which by the way, I've been on the receiving end of that. Some of the stuff I interviewed Margaret last year and I got a, a deluge of like really vicious behavior thrown my way. Mm. Um, I don't like the way that now because they're all arguing with one another, they're spoiling the whole season. You know, these shows, like we make a career out of this, but like most people are just looking to it at the end of the day as an escape and like, don't ruin that for people. Um, Aside from that, I thought the most interesting scene, honestly, was when Rachel saw Jen Fussler talking to Teresa and -hmm. just the realization, I've just invested a year of my life into someone with whom I thought I was very close and now I see that they're a people pleaser and they can't mm-hmm. be trusted and this will forever change the dynamics between us. Like that was a really good scene. Yeah, I think that uh, I heard Margaret say on uh, Jeff Lewis's show on XM, I heard her say, Rachel just is non-confrontational and she'll just go which any way the wind blows to not make anybody, I mean, so Jen, sorry, Jen, Jen Fessler. Jen Fessler yeah, doesn't want gross. anybody to be mad at her. So she'll go any way the wind blows. And I, like I keep that. telling her at some point you have to stand up or you have to stand for something. And Margaret doesn't dislike her or wasn't saying she disliked her. She likes her a lot. She was yeah. just like, she's new to this. And so she doesn't understand like, you can't be loyal to everybody because somebody's going to be shit talking you. Um, yeah. I didn't and- like how she was like, I like Teresa. I like her. And you're like, how can you be friends, friends with someone if you know that Teresa is doing everything in their power, her power to to disrupt their lives, to say damaging things. Like, I don't think that's okay. Well, I did think it was interesting now that we know what we know about all the stuff that came out from Melissa's old nose, you know, Instagram account and all that stuff um, or Twitter or whatever it is mm-hmm. that they're 
planting stories the day that they're filming. So you could look at your phone mm-hmm. and be like, I just saw this story on my phone. It is because you always know that like there's some shenanigans going on, but yeah. I never thought it would go so much as like, Hey, we're filming today. So put this fake article out so I could talk about it on camera. Yes. That's interesting because we saw it in real time in episode one. And that made me go, these people that are so, first of all, never been, I don't understand the tree huggers. I'm sorry. I don't. She does make good television, but that Louis did not elevate her. It brought her no. way down. It brought yeah, her way down. I, I, I'm endlessly frustrated with him getting any camera time. And they had that shirt on. Give me pizza, you old troll. And her says, namaste, bitches. I'm like, mm. really? I get it. Branding, but come on. Come mm-hmm. on. And he said that to his dad and you're now the stepdad. Ugh. It's all Ugh. gross. It's yeah. all gross. And he's wearing no-nose pajamas for fuck's sake. All right. Well. Yeah, I can't undo that one. That's the end of that. But I did want to say, Kate, before you and I got on, I was driving in my car. I was listening to your episode you just did about um, Bronx Zoo 90, the oh, documentary. Oh, so good. It's so good. Yeah. I sent it immediately. Um, I sent my friend who's a huge Yankees fan. I sent him a thing. It's a because it's on Peacock. I was like, I don't know if you know about this documentary. You'd be all – he's Yankees fan since he was like a little kid. Did he I know? know you, um, I didn't see if you wrote me back before I got on. Oh, I'm sure but- that they do because my friend um, is a gigantic Yankees fan, and I just said Bronx, and they finished the text like Zoo oh, 90. Like yeah, they're yeah, all, yeah. they're like they can't wait. Yeah. Okay. Well, he probably knew about it because he's probably on an email list or something. But I yeah. sent it to him. I was like, I don't know if you know about this documentary, but you should watch it because it sounds like wacko right up your alley. I'm yeah. going to tell my husband too. And I said, also, you should listen to my friend Kate did a podcast with the producer to get some behind the scenes. So I think if somebody yeah. at home and like loves sports, this is a great thing for you both to watch. I mean, yeah. wasn't it, it your podcast where Kathy Griffin was said, I don't even care about sports, but I like the docuseries. It's because you learn yeah. about someone's personal story. So I think actually a lot of these sports docuseries kind of bring people together. So if they're, if you're looking for something to watch this week, here are my two recommendations. Anybody with sports, even if you're like kind of like sports, the story of the Yankees 1990 season is insane. It, it like there's so many crazy people. It's really kind of funny and crazy and wild to watch. The other thing is Love Undercover on Peacock, which I is know you texted me about that, but so I haven't good. had a chance to watch oh it. Oh my God, you're going to die because okay, write that people down. aren't familiar with it. It's a dating show where you've got five bachelors and they are dating these women it's set in Los Angeles. These women have no idea that these five guys are actually international soccer stars. Mm. So they walk in and they're like meeting these guys and they think that they have jobs like a construction worker and a fitness trainer and a restaurant manager Yeah, because the guys have to keep it quiet in order to see if they can find love. So it's got, you have the women who are like, I'm an influencer and I just want a guy who can like elevate my lifestyle. And then you have the guys who are like, it's really hard to date when you can't use the information that you're a footballer because yeah. that's what always works for me. And it yeah. reminded me of the episode I did with um, the creator of Rock of Love with Brett Michaels. Okay. This was episode 121, my favorite of all time. And the the creator who actually went on to create Below Deck, he oh. told me that they had to teach Brett how to date because he just basically just had like groupies. So right. like, okay, like. You know, you have to ask her, like, what's your name? Like, where do you live? What? And he what's was like, your name? he was like, wait, what? Because it was like, he would open a door and there'd be a girl topless. Yeah. Uh, he'd have to work for anything. So you have this one footballer who's 37 and he's like an ex footballer who now is like a huge radio football uh, personality and was part of a scandal because he was married before and he cheated on the woman. It was like all over the press in the UK. Okay. And he's super funny, like somebody we would go to college with kind of personality. Yeah. And he's like, this, for fuck's sake, this sucks because I can't tell people like I'm a footballer. Like that's what always works for me. Now I have to be like a regular person. So it, it's very amusing. All the guys get along really, really well. And the some of the- Are they, like in, a, are they like in a house? They put, end up putting them in a penthouse because the one guy, Marco, keeps getting recognized. I go, well, no shit, Sherlock. You guys are filming in LA and he's a Mexican- like Olympic soccer star. Of course, well, people are going to recognize him in all, LA. Yeah, I was wondering if they were all from the UK or if they were from all no. different countries. Two of them for, are from Mexico. One um, won the Olympics, like an um, Olympic medal, and has wow. played on a ton of t- teams, um, both regular soccer and indoor, and is uh-huh. like beloved in Mexico. Okay. The other guy is the uh, son of a guy who owns three Mexican soccer teams and this very handsome, tall drink of water 
also plays in Spain. Mm. Then you have Lloyd, who's 28, who I interviewed, who is stunning. He's six two and he plays for a team in uh, England and he's from England. Okay. And then you have Jamie O'Hara who played in England. He was like friends with David Beckham and he mm. lives in England. And then you have Ryan who I also interviewed and he's Dutch, um, but Ooh. played in the UK for like Liverpool. Like, and he yeah. also dated Amanza from selling sunset for a couple of years. He's very okay. cool. He's like super gorgeous and he always wears sunglasses and he's just very meditative. So but the funny thing with him is they give them the folders of like, this is what your job is. So like, no, some freezing. Yeah. They told him to eat that he's a construction worker. Well, throughout the episodes, he's like dialing it up. At one point he tells a girl, yeah, uh, I was working one of my jobs. I was uh, working on the Burj Khalifa. I was like hanging off the building. And these girls are like, oh, really? Okay. But the best is when they kick a girl off and then they get to tell them, I'm actually like an international soccer star. Because some of them wow. are like, I'm sorry, wait, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll watch it. I'll, I how feel many like how many you could watch it with out? your husband. I think four. You could watch it with your husband. You guys will just laugh and laugh and laugh. And you know, like my I said, husband they, and my son are super, super, super into um, British football. They're like, they went to two matches while we were over there. They went to Elton John's They're going to recognize some of those Watford, guys. Watford, and they went to Arsenal. They're going to love it. They're going to yeah. be punching the couch laughing. Like, yes. McBee family dynasty, Love Undercover, Bronx Zoo 90. These are things that you can watch with the dudes in your life. Okay. Well, and we it's just so watching fun. I mean, I've already seen yeah, all of Ozark, yeah. obviously, but he's... Yeah. We had to have some things to watch because we were on vacation together. I was it's like, so fun to when something. you can watch something together. Which the we never do. By the way, no, I never have something. We never do either. That's why I was I've like, I think watching, you like Ozark. There's I murder. Full, no, not full swing. Uh, Breakpoint, which Dan is crazy about tennis. And then he's like, mm. well, I want to watch this other scripted series first. I'm like, oh, f uh, forget it. Like, I, I got to know. I know. And also for me too, a lot of it, I'm sitting and I'm working and I'm writing notes. So when I do get a chance to watch yeah. something just for fun, it's so rare. And then I'll be like, Hey, I'm going to watch this murder documentary. And Dave's always like, no, no. Oh, speaking of murder, there's one on Hulu on Friday and it is called the beauty queen killer. Okay. It's my it Friday episode actually. So okay. uh, Christopher Wilder was an Australian American who went on a 47 day rampage in 1984 where he kept kidnapping women and then would kill them. And one, he kept captive for nine days. And this is the first time she's ever been interviewed about it. Or were they all and, beauty queens? Is that why he's called that? Well, it was like he would approach women in the mall, like, okay. hey, you're beautiful. Can I take your picture kind of deal? Right. I'm a mom um, scout. But mm -hmm. the producer, I know Elliot, he had been on my show before reviewing like a Beatles doc. Uh -huh. His wife went to school with the girl that was kept captive. Ooh. And so he circled back to her and was like, hey, would you ever be interested in telling your story? Yeah. And that's why. She came forward. She like knew the people behind it. Um, anyway, you get it's very survivor heavy. It's not really talking about the the creepy guy, yeah, but more about like their stories, which I think is, you know, much better, obviously. But that's a good that's a good true crime one. And did you watch the ABBA one? There's an ABBA doc that you can stream it. ABBA I against watched the ABBA odds. One. If people like music, that's a good one too. It's the whole story backstory on how they became this global phenom. Yeah, I'm trying to catch up. I haven't watched last Sunday's episode of the Jinx, uh, episode four. I haven't yeah. watched yet, but one, two, and three I've watched, and I've just been riveted. Is it funny the par those paralegals who are like dorky and they just keep laughing? Love them. They're <laughs> they're like they're twins, but they're not identical. Yeah, they are so funny, and they when they imitated like <laughs> Bob. Like when, just like yeah. what we used to do uh, when Teresa or Joe would call from prison, like it's Joe. Yeah, it's exactly. Teresa. <laughs> well i've got a lot of things to watch now yeah so. you got a lot to watch. Thanks, so thanks listen for, for the people listening just go to katecasey.substack.com because you're going to get a yeah. list of what to watch each week it's really really very helpful like those things i just mentioned you probably had no idea about and i might bring you together with the person that's in your life maybe it be as a friend a coworker, maybe it's somebody that you live with maybe yeah. it's a child of yours it's going to give you a lot of different options docuseries reality shows documentaries katecasey.substack.com and you can get the archive list and then you can listen to my podcast reality life with kate casey please join the facebook group reality life with kate casey and you can find me on socials instagram uh at kate casey ca tiktok it's kate casey twitter and threads at kate casey and bonus episodes on i have a patreon too with bonus episodes and i just covered 
the Miss Teen USA and the Miss USA resignation scandal. You can check that out. And also uh, my friend Scott was on who's a medium and we talked about dead celebrities, which include Queen Elizabeth. Wow. And what's really going on with Charles, William, and Kate. So patreon.com wow. backslash Kate Casey. Well, I am a member of your Patreon and I saw the teen one, but I didn't see the Scott one. So that's It's awesome. one back. Yeah, one it's back. one back. Okay, I need to go. And when we that. talk about Matthew Perry. Mm. Yeah. Sad. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's where you find Kate. Uh, and you guys find me at Pink Shade Pod over on Instagram. As you know, I'm out here begging for followers at all times. So please help me get to 10,000. It's all I'm at. I'm like 300 or less away at oh, this there point. You go. There you go. I mean, I don't even know what I have to do. My joke is, who does Brielle have to blow for me to get to 10,000? <laughs> What's happening to Brielle right now? She's engaged. Oh, she's engaged. Oh, okay. Yeah, I shouldn't make a joke, but whatever. It's, a, it's an oldie, but a goodie. Well, I'm Always. sure her new husband doesn't appreciate that her mom said that either. It's, who would appreciate it? I think she was like 17. I mean, Cor- Corey didn't seem to mind. It was weird. <laughs> Ew. Uh, that's another story. All right, everybody. Um, I will talk to you later this weekend with Meredith talking about Seeking Sister Wife and Love in Paradise. And uh, I don't know who I'm going to have on next week to talk about Bravo. I think I might reach out to our buddy Brian Moylan and see what he's up to. <gasps> Brian. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. So good. So good. All right. Well, thanks, it's his Kate. birthday today. It's his birthday oh, it today. Is? Yeah, it's his birthday today. Happy birthday, Brian Moylan. Everybody reach out to him at Brian J. Moylan. Okay, bye. Ads not read by me, Mary Payne, don't necessarily reflect the views of Pink Shade. If you'd like to listen to ad free, you're going to go on over to Supercast or Patreon, and you can find the links to Pink Shade Prime at pinkshadepodcast.com.